Welcome back everyone to this third episode in my series on building a wooden clinker planked sailing dinghy. Now in the last episode I lofted out the boat. In this episode I'm going to look at how we use the lofting to make the station molds of the boat. Now the station molds are not a permanent part of the boat but they're very important because they are what gives us the shape of the boat. So we basically set them upright onto the keel and the hog and then we can bend the planks around them and that gives us the shape that we want. So I've got five station molds to make, and as I mentioned in the last episode, the way that we make them is we use the lines that I drew in the body plan on the loft floor. So we'll head over there now, and I'll show you how we go about making the station molds. So I'm going to start, quite naturally, with station mold one. I've already got these two pieces of wood put together. There is going to be a third piece, which is going to run here, the opposite of this one. I'm not going to put that on quite yet, though, and you'll understand why in just a moment. So the next thing is to take this and put it on top of the lines for station mold one. Now, the way I'm going to be able to pick up those lines, as you can see here, I've started putting down some pin nails. And I'm going to continue putting them all the way along this entire half of the station mold, because we only have half of it drawn. And then I'm going to put the wood on top of it, and I'm going to whack it with a hammer all the way along, and that's going to leave imprints in the wood. And that's going to show me the line that I need to cut the wood to. Now, what you will have noticed here, is that the pin nails are not actually sitting on the line. The line is right here. Now the reason for that is that if we look at the planes, we will see that we are lofting to the outside of the planks. And what that means is that we have to allow for the plank thickness, which in this case is 10 millimeters. So when we make the station molds, we have to put all these pin nails to take up the points 10 mil inside of the line. So I've now used a batten to connect up all the points. You can see we've got a lovely fair line there, and that is the line of the station mold, or at least one half of it. So I'm just going to cut that now with a jigsaw and finish it off with a hand plane. So I've taken it back to the loft floor, having shaped this half, and now I'm going to mark on all the water lines and square them across. In retrospect, I probably would have found it a little easier if I had done that before I cut this curved line. So for the next station mold, I'm going to do it that way because it does make it easier and save just a little bit of time. But that's all right. I'm just going to mark on the water lines here I will use my square to bring the lines up, and I'll do the same on this side, and then just bring them all across, and that will enable me to always know exactly where I want to put this. Now the reason why that's important is because of how I'm going to attach the other piece of wood. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over, and I'll just show you. So I'm going to flip this over and I obviously need to attach this other piece here. And I need to basically do the same thing over again, which is to put the pin nails here and pick up the points. But obviously, because we want these two pieces to be exactly the same, I need to know how to line up this edge here with Station Mold 1, except Station Mold 1 isn't drawn over here because we only draw them in half breadth. So that's why since I have this, I need to have the center line marked, which I do, and mark all the water lines, because that way I know exactly where it goes without having to actually match this edge up to a line. So 
So I've attached the other bit of wood on into roughly the angle that I want it to be. And I've put back the pin nails with one important difference. So looking again at the keel expansion, you remember I said that these have to sit on top of the keel. So we basically have to cut a recess into the station mold where it's going to sit on the keel. So I've marked that in as well, so I know where to cut that. It is going to be a little bit more complex than that, but once we have those lines marked on, I'll be able to show you what we do as far as the bevel goes, because the keel that it is sitting on is not going to be completely flat. It's not going to be parallel to the water line. It's going to be at an angle. So I finished shaping the station mold along the side so it can take the planks. So as I mentioned before, the next thing to do is to make the cut in the bottom here so it can sit on top of the keel. Well, I say the keel, it's actually going to sit on top of the hog, which runs along top of the keel. So this line here is what marks the top of the hog. And you can see how, as I mentioned, it's not parallel to the water lines and is dropping down. So. I want the station mold to be sitting along here, and that means that I need to take this bevel as it drops down. So I'm going to line the bevel up with station one, and then adjust it so that it's following that line. So next I'm going to put the bevel onto a bevel board. So the thickness of the station mold is 21 mil, so I've marked a line of 21 mil. And then I'm going to put the bevel gauge on, draw the line on there. And then I'm going to take a square, and I'm going to, going from that intersection point, and this is going to be a very, very small bevel, I have to say. You can see that there, that's a tiny amount, and it is actually this point here that is marking the measurement of our bevel. So we're going to lay the bevel board. You can see I've drawn this line, that's where I picked up the points from the pin nails. And we've got one of the lines matching up with that, and then the other one we're just going to mark on here. And then I'm going to come across and do the same on the other side. and then join these two lines together. And this is going to actually be the line that we want to cut to. Now the reason why I've measured down instead of up I will explain, and we'll go and have a look at the half breadth plan, and I'll show the way that I'm making the station molds, which is slightly different how I've done it before. So previously, when I made station molds at college, the way I did them was to actually put a bevel all along the edge here as well, so when the plank came around, it was sitting flush to the side of the station mold. However, I'm not doing that this time, because in John Leather's book on clinker boat building, uh, he says that you don't really need to do that because as long as the plank is just sitting along one of the edges, then that's good enough for it to follow. Um, however, in order to do that, you have to make sure that your station molds are set up always uh, towards the amidship side of the actual station line. And if we take a closer look at the half breadth plan, I'll explain what I mean by that. So let's just take waterline three here as an example. Uh, this is the line of the station mold going along, and if you were making it so that the station mold had a bevel, well, you can see, because you'd be making the station mold, say it has this thickness, and that's the station mold going across the boat, and the plank would be coming along here, and that obviously is at an angle. Um, but the way John Leather is saying to do it is imagine your station mold is completely square across, 
like this, well, that's fine. The plank's just coming along and it's touching that point. However, you can see that it's important to have the station mold heading in this direction on the towards the middle of the boat because if you tried to put it on this side well obviously you'd have to put a bevel on uh, because otherwise it just wouldn't work so I've decided to do it this way and it is going to save me a lot of time because I don't have to worry about doing all those bevels So I've cleaned up the housing here and made it all square across. So the inside line is exactly where we want it to be. Uh, but now we go to that line that I made earlier, which was from the pin nails. And I'm going to now chisel from this line up to that one. And that's gonna give us that very slight angle, which is gonna allow this, when it's put onto the hog, to be sitting completely perpendicular to the water lines. In order to ensure that this is a crisp line, it's always best to place a rule along it and then run along the line with a Stanley knife. That way, when you start chiseling, you can ensure that you're not going to have anything breaking out below the line where you don't want it to. That's mainly, for a lot of times, is actually just for pure aesthetics, uh, but sometimes it is for uh, structural function as well. And there we have it. Station mold one is now complete. It's ready to be set up on the hog and keel when I get around to making the hog and keel. But first thing to do is I've got to make four other station molds just like this. The station molds are all finished now. You'll notice that I've added a cross ball to all of them, and that is mainly to help strengthen the station mold because they will be under quite a lot of pressure when I bend the planks around them. Uh, I have also put them all so they line up exactly with the same water line. I've chosen water line six, and that's going to be helpful when it comes time for me to set them up on the backbone. Can't do that yet though because I haven't made the backbone and that's what's going to be coming up in the next video. So if you enjoy this one, please do hit like and subscribe and you'll be notified when the next video is out. And I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.